Hi, welcome to my blog. My name is Tom Chu, and today I'm going to show you an easy way to get a free Argyle pattern. Uh, the patterns that I use, I create. Um, I create them in Illustrator, and you can see this is all vector-based stuff. Um, it's made up of a bunch of, of pieces, okay? And you can see that, you know, I have to assemble it a certain way, okay, to make it work. So I'll put it all back together. But it all starts with making one shape with the rectangle tool. Okay, and I will go into transform and I'll say make it like 0.75 by one inch. Okay, and let's, let's make this do this again real quick. Make it just one by one. Okay, and then I'll right click it and I'll say transform. Let me do it up here so you can see it. Just to give you an idea what I have to go through to make this stuff. Transform, rotate. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees. And then I need to transform it. And it needs to be 0.75 by 1 inch. Okay, so there I have my first one, and then I need to duplicate it, and you get the idea. But the thing that makes this so important is, is that I can quickly stroke things and make things different colors. So if I want to make this blue, I can make it blue, okay? And if I want to stroke it, I can make it like a black or a gray colored stroke, and I can just turn off the fill, okay? So you can see that I can quickly make things uh, the way I want and if I want to have dotted lines I can come over to the stroke and I can say dashed line and I can make it like five pixels and I can make it go directly to the corner and you can see that I can I have like a lot more control let me get it back to where you can see it here um, you can see that I have a lot more control with strokes and the ability to uh, create different patterns. Well, in Photoshop, you don't have this type of, of control. Okay, um, It's hard to make vector shapes, which means I can make it as large as I want, or as small as I want, and math dictates how it's going to appear on the screen. Okay, So if I want to make these types of patterns, I make them in Illustrator and then I save them as a file type. I can save them as a JPEG, a TIFF, whatever, and I can define them as a pattern inside Photoshop. So instead of going through all that work in Illustrator, I want to show you guys how you can get free Argyle patterns. If you go to, there used to be called Cold Fusion, but there's Adobe Exchange. I'll put the link inside the blog. And there's a guy who made, his name is Indwarmar Kumar. I butchered his name. Indywarm Kumar. And if you click on this link, it will open up free Photoshop patterns. Okay? So you just go over here and you click download. And when you download them, it'll be a zip folder. Okay? It's got a JPEG and it's got a terms of use and it's got some thumbnails. But this is the file you're after, this pattern. Save this file to a folder which I have saved all this to a folder just to show you how you do this so you load up Photoshop okay and let's just make a new layer and let's delete that layer we gotta unlock it first and let's delete that layer control deselect delete the layer okay so now if you wanna install a pattern this is the easiest way to do it instead of trying to dig through your computer and find out what folder they go into if you just go to edit fill and in the drop down menu you have content aware history pattern we're gonna go with pattern okay now you come over to this little drop down triangle and this is where your bubbles and all your other patterns are and this is one that we created in a previous tutorial you come over here to this little gear looking guy and you say load patterns and what it does it automatically goes to the folder which is inside of 
app data roaming adobe adobe photoshop cs6 presets and patterns instead of trying to dial down and find that folder it finds it for you and you go to the folder that you created that has your patterns in it which is his argyle argyle large this is a pattern file pat if it's a single file it will be a png okay if it's a pattern file means there's lots of patterns in, in there we'll just put it in to the folder yes I've already installed it once so we're going to copy and replace it and then you double click on that file and see it loads those Argyle patterns into Photoshop so you select which one you want to use so let's try maybe mm, this one here okay so we select OK and it fills whatever we have selected with that Argyle pattern. Okay. Now if you want really high res ones, you know, like stuff for doing giant bulletin boards or huge wall prints, you have to go in and create your own in vector artwork in Illustrator. Um, I can supply some for you if you guys ever run into that need. Uh, another way you could do is create smart objects, but say I'll show you how to make a high res one. So we go File, New, and we're going to set the resolution at 300. Let's make it 360. And let's also set our, at, let's say, US paper. So it's 8.5 by 11 at 360 DPI. So that will print out easily. We'll select all. We'll go Edit, Fill, and we'll grab one of those Argyle patterns and we'll select OK and it fills it that whole sheet with an Argyle pattern okay so we'll create a new layer we'll hit control D to deselect we'll come over here and we'll turn this into a smart object um, you can't see it it it's dropped down below let me see if I can move this up we'll just move this layers up to the top here so you can see it so if you right click on this thumbnail we'll unlock it convert to smart object okay so now when we do something with this so say if we want to grab a portion of it or we resize it let's close this one off so you can't see it we can zoom in and you can see that at 180 percent we don't have any of that stair stepping but definitely at 100 percent we don't have a problem uh, if you need to use the smart object you can resize it infinitely okay so I'll show you how that works well I'll show you both if we grab this one here we hit control a let me zoom out close this pattern off if we select this pattern so control T okay and we shrink this baby down really small we hit enter let's do that again control T and we shrink it down really small we hit enter okay so now if we zoom in you can see the quality that Photoshop has down sampled that layer too okay so watch what happens let me zoom out a little bit so if we do control T again or command T on a Mac and try to restore that to the original size that we had it or close to there look at the pattern it's destroyed and we didn't even bring it as big as we had it Here's where the smart object shines. Let's hide this layer. Turn this on. Now if we hit Control T here, and we bring this all the way down small. Let me move it to the middle of the screen. We bring it really small. We're going to hit Enter. And let's zoom in to our pattern. We made it so small you can't even distinguish the pattern anymore. Right? So let me zoom back out. We hit Control T, 
And this time I'm going to zoom in so I can grab one of the handles. Let me zoom in some. Control T or Command T. And now if I zoom out, do you see all the details still there? Let's put it back to where it was, full size. I have to zoom back out. But I think you get the idea. You can transform it any way you want, any size, any shape. And you never lose the detail. Do you see that pattern? We're at 140%. Whereas when I made a sample, we lost it. That's the power of smart objects. So if you use smart objects, you can get away with lower res stuff if you're going to be shaping stuff and moving stuff around for uh, creating designs. Well, I hope that answers your question on how you can create a pattern from an image and where you can get them. Also, how I create my patterns, especially like the Argyle pattern that you see here that I've started working on. Uh, this is an unfinished pattern that I use. And you can change these colors. Let's see if we can change these colors real quick. So let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer on this, a hue saturation. And let's come over here and colorize. So we can change it to that color. And we can change it to purples or that's the saturation amount. Let's change it to greens and blues, reds, oranges, yellows, browns, tans. So you don't have to be stuck with one color or one pattern. So you can also just do hues. So you can get all these different color combinations of one specific uh, pattern okay so with all those ones that are in that free catalog you should have enough argyle patterns to last you for a long long time by the way this tutorial was requested by one of the members um, and so I told her I'd put it up I want to thank you all for taking time to visit my blog today if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section below uh, if you have any topics or things you want to talk about or you just don't understand, i love to help you guys uh, as best I can. All I need you to do is ask me about it. And I'll jump in there and do the best I can to try to explain it to you. So, we've come to the end of another tutorial. And until next time, we'll see you soon.